So we found something that works extremely well in the spot market and something that works absolutely terrible in the spot market. And we're going to talk about going to the Midwest from the East Coast. As you can see here in my spreadsheet, I was going off of Philadelphia to Chicago and then Chicago back to Philadelphia. So three day trip back and forth. And basically we have our spot rates in here, right? So for a van, like just a normal dry van, you know, on this lane, you get paid an average of 1,069. Flatbed is 1,872 and reefer 1,546. And the miles back and forth, uh, we have 758 in here. And then on the way back from Chicago, you actually get paid far more than going out there on average. So uh, from Chicago to Philadelphia, 16, 21, and 2300. Now, where do we get these rates, right? So we got them from the DAT Express. So you, there's a tool on here when you log in to see uh, basically the quick rate lookup. You have the spot rate and the contract rate. The contract rate is like a trucking company or really a trucking company working directly with the customer. And the spot rate is what a broker brokers it out for. So typically the brokers are not getting this. The brokers charge less than larger trucking companies and then broker it out to owner operators at a lower rate than they get the load for. So basically if I go in here, Philadelphia to Chicago, search flatbed, it'll show me these rates. Again, from looking at this, flatbed is kind of king right now. I would say if you're starting your own thing and you have like one, two trucks, maybe three, I would definitely start with flatbed to minimize your financial risks, right? And you're gonna see that further in the numbers here, right? So our round trip from, you know, going to the Midwest and back, you can see here is about $707 in tolls. Uh, there's obviously different routes you can take, but a lot of times they take significantly longer if you try to deviate off this route. And I've tried before, you can do it, but in the lost time, you're gonna probably lose more money, right? 707 bucks, the driver getting paid three days, 350 a day, 1,052, and then we have our three revenues here. So obviously the van is the worst by far, and the reefer is even below the, the flatbed, which is unusual, but the case in this case. Our round trip miles, three days out on the road, average cost per day of $1,100. What's crazy here is like when you factor in all your costs and you're just doing the market rates, you're losing like $245 a day, which is like crazy to me that people are even running for this low of rates, but they're running for even lower if you look. So on the van end, right, if I switch this back to van, you know, a lot of times the spot rate's even a little bit higher than what you're normally gonna get, right? So you're seeing people are doing this on average between $1,031 to $1,200, which is not a ton difference, right? So, but there are people doing it for less than this. If you have a dry van, that's right now in the market just far less valuable than having a flatbed or a reef for, for that sense. But so the total net, if you're paying a guy to go out there, you're losing $737 if nothing goes wrong. So if it's like perfectly executed, you get that reward of uh, negative $700. Now, if we go to our flatbed, um, which I like much, much better, you know, you're making like $1,300 more dollars. There's not extra fees associated with, you know, reefer fuel or anything with the trailer in that sense versus a dry van. And over this three day period, you can make, you know, $500 and 12, $512 which is very good for today's market because you're paying for your truck and you actually have some profit and you're actually paying for the driver as well here and you're paying the massive amount of tolls. So you're really covering all your costs and still doing pretty well on this run. And the reefer is obviously close to it, but if you have a driver doing this and or your reefer is not brand new or any, like with the reefer, you're carrying so much risk. Like you're making like your risk, you. Traveling for 1,500 miles to make $400 while hauling $90,000, $70,000 worth of goods, that if that temperature is set wrong and it's your fault that it's set wrong, your reefer breakdown policy is not going to cover it and you're going to be out of business and getting sued, right? So we've had this before. 
Uh, we just have the money to pay it, but we did have the money to pay it. But you know, we've had claims for uh, twenty thousand dollars. The biggest one we've had is for you know seventy thousand dollars. And since then, I've just said no to the reefers. You know, the rates do look compelling online, but you don't really see many companies that are larger and successful that just have reefer trailers, right? So with regard to these reefers, it's like, when do you see a company with 15 trucks that's just hauling reefers that's not doing LTL or that's not, you know, selling the product that they're hauling? Um, a lot of guys that, you know, have wholesale distribution centers will have their own reefers, but uh, there's not a lot of guys that are just common carriers successfully doing reefers because it's kind of like you're carrying like an atomic bomb. Like as soon as that thing goes off, you're going to lose tons and tons of money. So if you want to do something that is less in the market than a dry van that has not the liability of the reefer, I would really recommend like getting into this flatbed stuff. And at the end of the day, it's not that difficult. Just watch a couple of YouTube videos on how to strap it up, you know, and get the straps on there and just make sure it's it's tight i mean there's other things like tarps and stuff but um just say you know how to do it and watch a youtube video on how to do it because this to me far too risky you know you don't want your bananas or clam chowder or that was our big claim clam chowder but um <laughs> you don't want you know load of watermelons or asparagus something expensive or pineapples to you know go bad and then you're on the line for all this fruit that no one wants or food that ice cream or whatever you decide to haul in your reefer too risky reefer now we have our dry van this is just clearly failure so you don't want to do dry van there's obviously lanes that could maybe work with dry van maybe not right now but the flatbed puts you into a category where you're a little bit outside of the box the people, if you want to get a direct customer, are more localized decision makers. You're not working with Petco or Dick Sporting Goods or CNS where it's massive corporate and you got to wait forever for someone to actually make a decision. And they're not going to use a single owner operator. But with a flatbed, you can go to your local lumber mill or you know landscape distribution company, work with them direct, or actually just use the load board and get you know this higher paying work it's kind of my my two cents here uh the midwest i think definitely beats the northeast for sure um you know you could do especially if you're not the driver on this one you know on a three-day period if you're not the driver you could actually net you know 1500 and then you could factor in like you know 500 dollars of unforeseen expenses and then this actually works right so the one negative thing would be a lot of times these uh 15 day averages or in this case, like a seven day average uh, could be slightly inflated. But um, if you're totally focused on yourself, you can even get something consistent. It's going to turn out, you know, a lot, a lot better for you. Yeah, that's my uh, my analysis here. This actually gave me a little bit of hope because uh, the spot market's been so bad that it's kind of nice to actually find something that like kind of works. Right. So uh, call your local trailer distributor and try to lease yourself or rent a flatbed trailer if you're trying to, you know, salvage the financial success of your company but anyway thanks for listening and i'll come up with another lane soon